Hello, everyone. Um, okay, yeah, so my name is Lina, Lina Ceballos. Um, I am a project coordinator at the Free Software Foundation Europe, or FSFE. Um, and for those who, know, who don't know us, we are a charity that empowers users to control technology. And uh, yeah, we believe that that's possible with free software. So among, uh, like together with other activities, we have our uh, reuse initiative, which is a set of best practices that aims to make uh, the displaying of legal information, uh, and by this I mean uh, copyright and license information, in a free software. Um, it, seem, it, it, it aims to make it easier and uh, also easily uh, verifiable as well as um, it seeks to um, already implement existing practices. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first I would like to start with a short quiz. I know the answers, I think, uh, but let's give it a try. So please uh, raise your hand who has ever programmed some code here. <laughs> okay, um, and then now please raise your hand uh, who has ever released some of this code under a free software license. Perfect. I'd like to see all the hands uh, right side the same, like with just two questions. And last, uh, please raise your hand who has never been confused by how to declare uh, or like, properly declare license and copyright information in your free software project. Yes, okay, uh, so basically this is the goal of reuse. Uh, reuse seeks to, uh, I don't know if you, I think it's only this one, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, yeah, so basically reuse seeks to help uh, on, in this process that might become a little bit uh, complicated sometimes. So let's talk about how the state of play is at the moment. And unfortunately, it's not in a galaxy far, far away, but it's happening in our ecosystem right now. And these are some of the common mistakes that we've seen um, so far. So the first one is that there is uh, missing information about license and copyright of own or third party code. So sometimes we go uh, to a repository and it's really unclear uh, to, and it's really hard to identify this legal information in the code. And the second one, which is connected to the first one, is uh, that reusers may overlook the chosen licenses for all or uh, some individual files in our repository. And I think you all know that uh, to a big extent, the freedoms that we uh, give depend a lot on the licenses we choose. So this information is uh, really, really important. The third one is uh, that it's a little bit tricky to know how to deal with multiple licenses. So we don't know how to display this information when our project is under more than one license. And it's also hard to get to know uh, this information as someone uh, outside the project, let's say. And uh, the fourth one is that there is a little bit of ambiguity on the licenses. So for instance, uh, we find that some projects are under the GPL license, uh, but we don't know. We can be the version three, but we don't know if it's uh, version three only or later, so it becomes a little bit ambiguous to know exactly what license uh, the project is uh, under. And uh, the last one is that there might be some conflicting best practices. I like to give this example, for instance, with the license. Uh, some projects store the license in a in the copying, in a, in a file called copying. Others uh, store it in a file called license. Others in the readme file. So it's really uh, difficult to really get to identify and know where the license is and yeah, what license we're using. And 
these are not the best practices you're looking for um, because we want to make it as clear as possible for the whole ecosystem and for everybody. Um, so um, that's why I want to invite you today to reuse the force. And reuse is basically making, trying to make this easy uh, to f like to find and to to also display this copyright and license information uh, because this information is going to be uh, stored in every single file of our uh, repository and it's going to be added uh, through a header so every single file in a repository is going to have a header uh, that is going to contain this information um, reuse is also trying to avoid silos because we're going to store this legal information as close as possible to the code. So again, if you go to every single file, you will be able to identify this information. Uh, reuse is also uh, aiming to make this information readable for humans and for machines alike. So we all are going to be able to understand this information as well as our tools. Um, and last but not least, reuse is uh, aiming to make licensing uh, easy, but why not fun as well for developers, no matter the size of the project. And um, so how do you do that, right? It's very simple. It's only three steps. The first one, uh, you will choose and provide a license. The second one, uh, you will add this copyright and license information to each file of your repository. And the third one, uh, with the help of our linter tool, you're going to um, confirm that your project is reuse compliant. So let's go one by one. The first one is uh, we're going to choose and provide a license. So again, uh, we uh, advise to uh, make a wise decision on the kind of license you want to choose for your project because, again, that's basically the terms and conditions that you're going to select for your project. And we also recommend to use already well-known and often used licenses. And we're going to save the license of the text uh, like the text of this license in a file and we're going to store it in a directory that it's going to be named licenses. So this is one of the first features of reuse. We're going to just have a dedicated directory for our licenses and all the files, all the licenses are going to be stored here. And we're going to name this text file um, after the XPDX license identifier. So here we're making use of existing uh, practices, and that's why we're making use of the SPDX license identifier. So basically, our project is going to look like this. Um, it's going to have uh, the licenses directory, and then you will see that the text of this file is named after the XPDX license identifier. Uh, one small remark here is that um, Reuse doesn't support uh, license compatibility so far, so it is important for you to double check that if you're going to select more than one license in your project. We at the FSV also have a dedicated mailing list for license questions in case you have any trouble or you're a little bit unsure how to proceed, you can always reach us out in uh, our mailing list. Uh, okay, and now the second one. So now we're going to go and add a header to every single of our files. Um, and the header is going to look like the example. So we're going to use the XPDX tags, uh, the license identifier, as well as the file copyright tags. Um, and again, we're going to make uh, use of the XPDX license identifier. So in this case, we know it's very easy to uh, understand that we're using the GPL trio later. And then we're just going to name the, the author of the, of the code. Uh, or reuse linter is able to identify if you just have the copyright symbol or you just have copyright 
written on your code. Uh, however, we want to make use of the SPDX tag, so we recommend to use the SPDX file copyright text. And I know that uh, you might be wondering how to proceed with files that you cannot edit, uh, such as image files or JSON files and so on. So for this, we have two alternatives. The first one, um, we're gonna create a separate uh, text file with the text of the, like this legal information. Uh, so we're just gonna add the header in a text file. And we're gonna name this file under the, um, the file and it's gonna be called dot license. So again, in this example, we see that there is a picture of a cat and then we're just gonna name it uh, exactly the same uh, dot license. And then everybody that go to this directory and then see the picture of the cat, then will be able to recognize that there is a license file and this information is stored uh, there. But we also know that for some projects that are pretty big, creating a dedicated license um, text, uh, like a text file for every single file can become a little bit of a burden and also it's not ideal because you can of course double the size of the project. So for these cases, we also have the option of creating a depth file file that we're gonna store in a directory that it's gonna be called dot reuse. Um, the depth file file is a project from the Debian and then it's just gonna look like this. Um, and it's gonna be also pretty straightforward to identify this. So we're gonna see that all the files in the image directory are under the CCBY4 and great artist is the author of those images. Um, for these cases, I think it's important to note that um, it's good to, to have, like to really know this information for the whole uh, directory because uh, you have to make sure that this information is correct, right? Like if there are a, an image in this directory that is not under this license, then you have to make sure to document or to note this. And the third one, um, yeah, we're just gonna confirm that our project is reused. We're gonna use our helper tool, or linter tool, um, and in seconds, it's gonna be able to scan the whole project and then it's gonna let us know um, yeah, what kind of licenses we're using and if there are some missing files and it's gonna just let us know ex exactly how, how it works. So now I would like to show you how you can make use of this tool. Uh, and for this, um, I have prepared this um, yeah, I have prepared this a small project. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, so I have this uh, project here. It has some directory, some um, couple of code uh, files, and then it has some images. Um, so we are gonna first make use of our lint tool. So we're gonna run our command reuse lint. And then we're gonna be able to see that, yeah, basically scans everything and then just told us that none of our files contains this uh, legal information. So we're just gonna start using, like, implemented, right? So we're gonna make use again of our tool. We're gonna make use of our reuse at header command. So, um, First, the copyright, so let's say Jane Doe is the uh, author of this code uh, and now the license. Uh, and for this uh, project, Jane Doe decided to use the GPL tree or later. So she, sorry. So she makes use of the SPDX license identifier. Um, and then in this case, if you don't specify the year, the tool is gonna add the current year. So if we, yeah, if we don't specify it, then it's gonna be 2022. But it turns out that she wants uh, to make sure that 
the year that she wrote the code, it's uh, 2018. So she's just gonna write it here. And then we're just gonna let know that the, the tool, what directories we're gonna add this header. So let's use a add it to the source directories. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, now. Now it should be fine? Yes. So now if we go to the directory, then we will see that, uh, yeah, the tool add the header and also recognizes the syntax and yeah, just add the information that we add there. So, okay, now we have included this to all our source code. Now let's scan again and let's see what our tool tells us. Uh, and then, yeah, just, so let, just uh, let us, just uh, told us that we have five files that are missing this information. So let's just go and add uh, this information for the image files. So we're just gonna add the same, uh, we're just gonna make uh, use of the same um, command. But in this case, the license is the CCB Y4. Um, and the year, um, yeah, it's 2012. And we're gonna tell the tool to add all directory. And then if we go to the directory, to the image directory, then we will be able to see that the tool uh, automatically has created a text file with this information for every file uh, yeah, in, in this case. So once again, we're gonna run the linter tool and then we still have three more files. Um, I'm just gonna leave the git ignore uh, for last. So let's just make uh, use of the same um, command. And then in this case, let's just tell to add it to the make file and to the readme file. And then just uh, just did it automatically as well. We can check again, can identify the syntax. Um, and yeah, in this case, the git ignore is technically not a copyrightable um, file, but the whole idea of reuse is that all our files contain this information. So in this case, uh, we recommend that you have two options. You can just put this file under the public domain, under the CCO or you can just make use of the same license that you have been using for your project. Nobody's gonna stop you from that, but in like if in any case you go to a court, the judge is gonna decide that it's under the public domain or that it's not copyrightable. So let's just add the, um, the header to this with the same license. Um, and yeah, let's just keep the, the year. So I'll just uh, add it please to the git ignore. So now technically our, our files are contain this uh, legal information. So if we um, use our LinkedIn tool, it's gonna tell us that yeah, ex um, the 18 files of our 18 um, are contain this information, but still our project is not reuse compliant. And this is because we haven't created the license directory, which is uh, an important feature of reuse. But with this, we can also make use of our uh, tool so you can just tell the, the tool to download all the licenses that you're using in your repository. And then, yeah, the tool is gonna create a directory and it's gonna download the text and it's gonna name it on the DSPDX license identifier. So uh, if we go one last time, then we will see that finally our project follows the specifications of, um, yeah, Rios. So yeah, this is um, basically how Reuse looks uh, in practice. I know that it's um, a very small project and then in reality it's completely different. But uh, yeah, the whole idea is, uh, was to show how the tool works and I mean, you guys who are developers can make better use of this tool and probably is gonna help you a lot. Um, 
But now I would like to talk a, li uh, talk a little bit about the components of uh, reuse. So reuse is um, it's a, it's like an umbrella, like the initiative of a reuse is an umbrella. So it's um, composed of best practices, which I just more or less explain, um, which are the specifications, such as the licenses uh, directory, the headers in every single file, and alternative uh, alternatives for files that you cannot comment. And basically, with this. Uh, specifications, we are aiming to make reuse the standard way to display this information. We also have a tutorial and an FAQ uh, to help uh, people getting started. Um, so the tutorial is basically what I, I just show in the practical example. And there are also another bunch of features that uh, the tool has that can also um, help a lot. Um, and in the FAQ, we give answers to questions that go from the tool itself, but also more legal-oriented complex uh, questions, because what we are aiming to do is to lower the threshold so more people can actually start making use of reuse. As I just showed, we have the helper tool, um, which also, I mean, is just seeking to support developers in making the project reuse compliant, and it uh, actually helps a lot. Um, it, for like, uh, after you implement reuse, there are also some options to, like, such as a pre-commit hook or uh, the CI workflow implementation. So once your project is reuse compliant, you can adopt this and then it's gonna start scanning and helping you to keep track of your project in the future. And we have also an API uh, in which you can register your project once it's reuse compliant. Um, and then if it's reuse compliant, you will create a batch that you can put on your repository later um, to let others know that your project follows the specifications of reuse. And in that sense, we can also keep track of how many projects have been implementing um, reuse. So once again, what are the reuse uh, specialities? What is so special about reuse? Um, so we have the license text. Every single license that we're gonna use, doesn't matter if it's only for pictures, for one piece of code or for everything. Everything is gonna be stored in this licenses directory. Um, every file is gonna contain this legal information through a common header. Um, and we are gonna make use of the SPDX license identifier uh, tags, as well as the SPDX copyright file tags. Uh, reuse has alternatives for, com for files that you cannot comment. And, uh, in the long run is trying to make unambiguous uh, the way we display this copyright and license information uh, because, again, every file of our repository is gonna contain this information. So now um, I would like to talk a little bit about the ongoing developments. Uh, with reuse, so again, our tool uh, is uh, ongoing, it's an ongoing improvement, um, and then it's seeking to further improve uh, the helper tool as well as the API. So our developers are in a daily basis working to improve it. Um, the specifications as well, um, for instance here, um, I would like to mention very quickly that we are trying to change the dev file file for a YAML file in the future uh, to make it more flexible as well. And yeah, probably that's gonna change as well, it's gonna be better. Uh, but this is an ongoing process and this is still, uh, there is uh, still some time to get there. There is also um, snippet support in the pipeline. So in the future, if you have snippet on your code, you're gonna be able to declare legal information for that specific snippet as well. And yeah, there's a bunch of other changes that are in the queue uh, at the moment. 
We are also trying to better integrate in other platforms and other initiatives. And again, that's why we're making use of the SPDX um, license identifier and tags and the, the file and so on. And we are trying to spread the word, uh, which is basically what I'm doing here. We're trying to uh, let as many developers as possible know that this tool is here for you guys to make use of it. Um, so we're also supporting communities, but also companies uh, in adopting the best practices of, uh, of reuse. So here, for example, um, so we have the software that we, I, I just showed with the tool, uh, but we make use of that and we help communities and companies through different, in, like in different frameworks. So for instance, we have uh, the Next Generation Internet, which is a European Commission uh, initiative, which is uh, aiming to shape the internet of the future. And there are a bunch of projects on that framework uh, that we're helping to become reuse compliant. So we do so uh, through some guidance, but also uh, through like practical examples. So we send mer merch requests to these projects and then, yeah, in the future they decide if they implement it or not. But uh, we like to um, support these projects because they're just starting and then it's easier for them to just go for reuse from the beginning. We also have, as I already mentioned, our mailing list, which is uh, focused on license questions. So all our free software community is welcome to just drop any questions and our legal team is gonna do its best to help and to guide in this kind of issues because we know that this might become a little bit complicated sometimes, even for us as well. Um, and then last year we uh, launched our reuse booster project, which basically is aiming to change a little bit the workflow. Uh, so now we are approaching projects and we're trying to work uh, closely with them, trying to understand their workflow, trying to understand their needs, um, and yeah, just helping them in a, close, in a closer way to implement reuse. Um, for instance, in, in this framework, uh, Curl has implement reuse and GNU Health has also decided to implement reuse in, on all its components. So yeah, we have seen that shift of just uh, sending merch, merch requests to a more like closer approach and I think projects value that a lot because uh, yeah, then you get to understand better how they work and what kind of needs they have and also what kind of questions they have. And so it's a kind of like an ongoing process, but in the end it really helps. So yeah, talking about who has adopted reuse. So in our API, we have more than 1,200 projects registered. Um, we like to believe that it's more, but they haven't registered yet. Um, as I already mentioned, the majority of projects of the Next Generation Internet uh, Initiative have implement reuse, which is, we're talking about more than 100. Um, again, like KDE and all its frameworks and uh, has implemented this and its licensing policy, so yeah, good job, <laughs> uh, KDE. Um, and as I already mentioned, Curl and GNU Health have decided to also implement um, reuse. GNU Health is still in process, uh, but the will is there. And from the corporate side, uh, uh, we have seen companies such as Siemens, Huawei, SAP, LifeRate, um, LF Energy, who have also implemented uh, reuse in their licensing policies. Uh, the kernel of Linux partially has implement reuse because of course it's huge. And the question is uh, whether you and your project want to also implement reuse and its uh, specifications. So how can you join us? Um, we have uh, also a dedicated mailing list for reuse in which you can also ask some questions if there is something that is not clear with the FAQ or uh, in the tutorial you can always ask anything there, and there is always uh, a debate going on there. 
Um, again, you can make one or all of your projects reuse compliant. Uh, I just show that it's very straightforward and once you get to understand all the features that uh, reuse has, it's pretty easy to use it. You can integrate reuse into your community like KDE has done. Um, again, free so um, reuse is a free software so you can always contribute with code um, to the tool as well. Uh, all the improvements that we have done are because of the community as well, all the issues and merge requests that are open there. So that's very valuable, valuable. and also, I mean, this tool is for you guys, developers, so if, you, if there is something that can be improved, we will very, we'll be very happy to know. And uh, yeah, you can help or guide others to implement reuse or to adopt reuse, again. It's very straightforward, so it's pretty easy to um, use it. Um, and here, I would like to give a big thank you to all our FSFP supporters, uh, because uh, really, with you, like you have enabled our work, and it wouldn't have been possible with your support. If you haven't, you're always welcome to support us. And yes. With this, I would like to close my presentation. I would be very happy to take any questions, and if uh, maybe we don't have the time to answer all of them, you can always uh, drop me an email or join our mailing list. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions in the audience? Yes? It's a little bit outside of the software context, but have you thought about um, reaching out to open science initiatives? So many universities are adopting policies of publishing data, software code, um, and other things related to the scientific process. Um, and I think this would be really relevant for what they're doing to standardize that process. So it's, it's about a bit outside of the software context, but have you thought about something like this? Um, well, I mean, in the FSP, we're trying to really get involved with uh, different communities. Um, maybe also this is already a, a, a little bit out of topic, but uh, we've been following a little bit what's happening with the AI Act and so on. And then based on that, we're also trying to get involved with uh, open data communities as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is definitely that we see um, as an opportunity because, um, because why not? Um, yeah, but I mean, it requires some, some time and human capacity, so we are just uh, doing our best. But yeah, we have that in mind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, for your <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. I'm really looking forward for the specification updates and the new features. Um, maybe I would like to add two points uh, from my personal wish list. One is so maybe smaller thing um, that might help reuse adoption. It's mainly in uh, GitLab and GitHub that those online platforms mostly um, fall back to the old copyright file or the license file and do not adopt the um, licenses in, um, in re the reuse directory, which is hiding um, what the licenses are really are in a repository. I think that might help because in KDE we see it because um, the licenses are not shown because GitLab uh, is not supporting it. That might help if the um, FSFE uh, talks to them and triggers them. It would be uh, good in that direction to go. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know if I, I if I completely got your your point. Maybe yeah, maybe because of the mask, it's also a little bit hard. <laughs> um, it's the display of licenses in a re repository. Um, you have all the licenses in the licenses directory, but. Uh, several online platforms ignore it. They use the old locations, the copyright file or the license file, and they only display those. So it's not visible uh, what you have there. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I see what you mean. Yeah, this is also uh, discussed by our uh, reuse team, actually. Um, yeah, mainly on like a Git, uh, GitLab and other platforms. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, something as well that requires some communication with them as well and uh, feedback and back and forth. 
but yeah, this is uh, definitely um, in in the pipeline. Yeah. Is Can you use the tool to switch from one license already used to another or update an existing license to a newer version for the whole project automatically? Um, I mean, if, you, if your project doesn't have yet the hitters, so it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Um, I know that there is a way to replace the information, so you could always uh, change the, the header. Um, so yeah, I think, I mean, if your project hasn't really adopted reuse yet, uh, changing the license is pretty straightforward because you just use the tool as I showed. Um, in KDE frameworks, we have the situation that we have code that's grown over many years and we have libraries or applications that mix source files from with different licenses. Um, and but but when we release the software, we want to say, for example, the library is LGPL 2.0 or 3.0. Um, is FSFE also interested in that? Trying to figure out from the used licenses in the project if if that's possible to say that I can release this entire project under a certain license that is compatible with all the licenses that are used. Yeah, no, sorry, can you, can you repeat the question again? I, I think it, the question was about uh, checking the compatibility of licenses, and I think you mentioned in the slides that it, you cannot do that at this point. I wanted to ask if FSFE is interested in exploring that with, with the reuse tool or something uh, different. With the, com yeah. with the compatibility, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this, uh, this has been also discussed, but uh, I mean, it's not w in, in our priorities yet because that requires, um, I mean, you need to understand the terms of the license as well. And I think it's important that there is some human oversight on that. Uh, decision, so to say. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a thing that has been discussed and also by the community, but uh, so far it's, it's not part of the priorities. Uh, why do you have a file as the basic unit of, uh, for copyright? Uh, why every file has to have an, a license? Why can I say all files in this, uh, in this project are under the same license? Why does it require to be one license? Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Um, because, I mean, if you, I mean, if your project is, jo is only un uh, under one license, it's pretty straightforward and very easy, but we know that a lot of projects use more than one license, and therefore it's very hard to know exactly what piece of code or what file is under which license. So we believe that the closer you store this information to the source or to the code or to the file, the less likely um, is that people would misunderstood this uh, information, and I mean, misunderstanding this legal information, it's, uh, it's a little bit complicated, and you know, we're talking about, you know, infringing um, license, uh, you know, requirements and, and, and so on, so we really try to make it as simple as possible to avoid these uh, legal issues in the long run. I think that's it for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.